Let's talk about luck in poker, a very controversial subject, which is tough for a lot of people to wrap their heads around. If someone's uneducated to the intricacies of a poker, they'll dismiss poker as all luck, a big crapshoot. And of course, in the short term, very high percentage of luck, but in the long run, luck should even out. And the more correct decisions that you make, the more you should profit, whether it's in tournament chip EV or in cash game, dollar EV. Now let's talk about circumstantial luck or the butterfly effect, if you will. There are many things out of your control within a given poker tournament. The randomization of your table draw to begin, the quality of players at your table, the distribution of cards, and the odds that a given player is even at your table based upon when they woke up, if they canceled their trip to Vegas, if something else happened to delay them from this tournament or for them not to come at the tournament in the first place. Also within the butterfly effect is hands that happen at other tables that you're completely out of the control of. One decision could greatly affect how a hand goes down two and a half hours later. Now let's discuss timing. Timing of luck and probabilities. Let's say you bet $10 on the number one in roulette. If you're lucky, one out of 38 times, the number one will come up on the wheel and you'll win 35 times your investment for a win of $350. Pretty lucky, you might think. True. What if this was your last $10? What if you normally bet $100 or $1,000 on that number? In this case, you'd be very unlucky that it hit when you bet your lowest amount. Think about this when it comes to playing tournaments. I play tournaments anywhere from $5 to $25,000. How I run in a given tournament will greatly affect my net profit or loss in a given month or even year. I could win every flip in a $10 tournament, dominate the final table and win $1,000, and then I could run horribly in a $1,000 tournament having to re-entry and enter multiple days and lose thousands. In this case, I'm still running above expectation because of how hot I ran in the $10 tournament. So I've actually used up my luck, if you can look at it that way, and I'm still down money. Luck has no memory, just like at the roulette wheel. Just because it landed red five times in a row doesn't mean it's more or less likely to be red on the next roll. The huge variance of tournaments is not only limited to the tournament itself, it's also affected by how lucky you are at a given buy-in of a tournament. I played for 12 and a half hours of the $2,650 Venom a week and a half ago to bag up and make day two with 842,000 chips, 450 players remaining, about 350 pay, the second hand of the day, this happened. Very frustrating. I think the only real decision on the hand is whether or not to bet about 20% of the pot on the flop. That should stop me from getting bluffed if I was bluffed or would it cost me the same versus an ace-ax type of hand. You live and you learn. And I've learned that we're gonna be aggressive. We're gonna be fearless. We're not here to make big folds. I still drove to the win to put up my $400 in this $40,000 guarantee tournament even after getting devastated online, soul crushed, whatever you want to call it. That's why I don't recommend being a professional poker player to anybody because the pain does not end. Maybe for some, maybe you're completely numb to it all, but that's going to carry over to your normal life. Your pain tolerance is so high that you no longer feel joy. And what type of life is that? It's all about balance. So we're going to stay balanced and be aggressive at the win today. We're playing to win. If we lose, it's expected. The only saving grace is that Ryan DePaulo reached out to me before day one and wanted a 10% swap. So he is running hot and he happens to be chip leader and they're in the money. So maybe he can do all the work for me.
Good luck, RDP. How are you today? Good, how about you? Good. Twenty thousand starting stack. Three new players got shipped. The rest are moving around. Okay. Blinds are two hundred, four hundred for twenty minutes. We play a few small pots, win a few small pots, and we have about twenty-five thousand. Going to three hundred, six hundred, six hundred. It's a turbo. That means we can't pass on mini edges. We're going for it. With blinds at 300, 600 under the gun, plus one makes it 1300. Action folds dust in the big blind. And we got the ace king off, so you know we're putting in that three bet. Four X is open, being out of position and fairly deep. He started this hand with about uh, 25,000. So we make it 5,200. And he quickly puts in the call, I'm putting him on a hand like a suited Broadway, maybe some mid pairs. Ace queen, ace jack type hand. Didn't contemplate a four bet, so we're gonna discount a lot of premiums. The flop comes jack four four rainbow. Pretty dry, tough for him to continue unless he has a jack. I bet 3,500, which I would do with all of my over pairs and whatever bluffs I might have in the spot, which isn't many. And he raises to 9,000 with about 10,000 behind. What's he repping? Queen Jack? King Jack? Pocket tens? Finding out where he's at? I don't like it. We got the aces blockers and the pocket kings blockers. Should we just go for it? Will he fold top pair? Or he could just be bluffing, clicking some buttons. I eventually fold, and I regret it. With blinds at 400, 800, 800, I'm in the small blind with Ace four of diamonds, could limp, could raise. We're playing aggressive today, so I raise it to 2,500. Big blind has a little over 30,000, and he puts in the call. Flop comes six, six, seven, one diamond. Good flop to see bet. A lot of his calling range is gonna miss, and we'll give you an immediate fold. He does put in the call. The turn is the five of diamonds, one of the best cards I can hope for. And now we gotta think about stack to pot ratio. I could continue and barrel and set up a river jam, regardless of the uh, run out. Or, I think our stack is pretty good for a check jam. There's also the outside chance he checks behind and we get a free river, but the plan is to check jam, make him really doubt his bet if he has like a 7x type hand. So I check and he bets 7,500. And according to the plan, I shove all in for 28,000. He barely has us covered. He goes deep into the tank. And he puts in the call. We're gonna need some help. Unless he has exactly king eight of diamonds. Let's hold. Damn. With blinds at 400, 800. Early position opens to 2,500. Cut off calls and the button shoves all in for 9,000. We're in the big blind with pocket queens. We isolate. All in, other two players fold and we're up against pocket aces. Mm. A few minutes before break, guy sits down on my left, says he's here to gamble. Lions are 600, 1200. I'm on the button with king, queen of hearts. I make it 2500. Small blind quickly shoves all in for 22,000. Action's back to us and we put in the call. King, queen of hearts, a beautiful hand. Hopefully we hit a good flop versus ace five of clubs. Here's the video. Action board, huh? <laughs> and we have about 50,000 on second break, no more re-entry, we're in for $400. We are starting back up with $1,500, $1,500, $1,500, $1,500, $1,500, $1,500, $1,500, $1,500, $1,500, $1,500, $1,500, $1,500, $1,500, $1,500, $1,500, $1,500, $1,500, $1,500, $1,500, $1,500
guy on my left who I already doubled up, puts in the call. We're heads up to a flop of king, queen, 10, two diamonds. Side to C bet, we do have range advantage and we got top pair open-ended. What more can we ask for? Bet 3,000 and he quickly raises to 10,000. I gotta ask myself, what is he repping? Ace, jack, jack, nine, king, queen. Of course, all these hands beat us, but pretty unlikely. We do have a relevant blocker with our jack. In case he has king, queen, we do have outs to a straight. He could just be doing this with like a low flush draw type hand. Seven, eight of diamonds trying to take it down in position. Uh, normally I'd call here and proceed on various streets, but today is a new day. I already bubbled the venom. I'm not coming here to call out of position with top pair, open-ended straight draw. Let's put him to the test. I shove all in. He thinks about it and he says, all right, I'll gamble, you're ahead. Well, that's, that's good news. He puts in the call. We're playing a 100,000 chip pot. He shows ace seven of diamonds. Please hold. Let's see. I'm going to say probably like seven. I don't know. Seven. We'll see. Can't judge it solely <laughs> by looks. Playing at the win, Monster Stack comes up to me after our table breaks and says, Hey, love the videos. Oh, glad, it, glad they help you build a 300,000 chip stack. We go on dinner break and he offers to buy me dinner. He knows the way to my heart through my stomach. Thank you to my friend here and his buddy for buying me dinner at the win. Hey, what's up, you guys? Hey, Asian males, 28 to 60 right here, all right? Don't discriminate, you guys. Much love for Boski. Watch the channel. Hit smash that subscribe button, all right? Boom. Big fan of the vlog. Big fan, big, big fan. fan. <laughs> and I'm not offended by any of the Asian stereotypes. <laughs> and there you have it. 5% might be triggered, but the vast majority appreciate the humor. I do not segregate with racism. I describe my opponents, how I feel they look, if you can't handle it, too bad. Enjoy the <laughs> vlog. We're coming back from dinner break with 105,000 chips, going to 2,000, 4,000, $20,000 for first in a one day $400 turbo. Hopefully, we chop with our buddy here. <laughs> With blinds at 2,000, 4,000, 4,000, I have about 100,000. Action folds to the small blind. He shoves all in for 60,000 in under one second. What types of hands would you shove all in for 15 blinds with? A lot. I look down at pocket sevens. It's time to get busy living or get busy dying. Get busy living or get busy dying. We put in the call, it's hard to make a pair. He shows king nine offsuit. We're off to the races. Cover. With blinds at 3,000, 5,000, 5,000. I'm in the cutoff with two black tens. We've been playing pretty tight, but this is definitely a spot we want to open it up. I make it 12,000 to go. Guy who covers me on the button puts in the call. The blinds fold and we're heads up to a flop of queen, 10, seven. Rainbow, we hit our set. Draw heavy board, I bet 15,000. He's never folding king jack. He's never folding the queen. He puts in the call. The turn's an eight. Jack nine gets there. Uh, only four suited combos of jack nine suited. I don't think he's gonna flat jack nine off. And if he does have that, we do have boat outs. We can't play scared. Time to size up and bet 40,000 on the turn. He thinks about it for a long time and puts in the call. As long as the river is clean, we're going for that value jam. 
the river is a queen. And my gut instinct is, all right, let's get paid. But then I think about what type of hands he would call us twice and how he would react on the river versus a jam or me checking. His hand brackets are queen X, pocket sevens, or missed draws like king jack or ace jack. He's never checking back a queen and usually he's gonna be shoving his draws. So there isn't really any, any value in value shoving. It's better just to check call anything. I have 94,000 behind, so I check it over to my man, and he shoves all in. I beat him in the pot, and his ace jack is no good. Good thing we didn't shove, and we pick up an extra 94,000 by thinking a little deep on that river, and we now have over 300,000 chips. Feeling good, money bubble approaching. We have made the money. Couple things to let you know up before we start back up. From here on out, if you have to bust out, have to meet me at the front of you there, have your ID ready, and I will pay you out. With blinds ads. 4,000, 8,000, it pulls me on the button. I got Jack 10 offsuit and about 430,000 chips. I think all options are on the table here. Limp, min raise fold, and open jam. We're gonna go the aggressive route today. So we go for the open jam with the 200K stacks in the blinds. Pretty reasonable play. The small blind, a very aggressive player from Italy, puts in the call. Barry Schulman folds and we're up against East nine off. Let's win this 40-60. We got a race. Classic race. Oh, where's the queen? Where's the queen? No justice. Nice hand. Still six-handed, Pearl Jammer opens to 18,000 under the gun. I'm in the cutoff with Ace Jack off. Pearl Jammer has about 160,000 to start, so we just flat call in position. Action folds to Barry Schulman, who shoves all in for 117,000 from the small blind. Folds back to us, and I put in the call. Let's gamble. Unfortunately, he shows ace queen. We're gonna need a jack. Let's hit. Will the jack hit? King. Oh, nice hand. And we're on break with 18 players remaining, going to 5,000, 10,000. We have about 320,000 chips. 32 blinds, just above average. Feeling good, playing good, let's stay in the zone. With blinds at 6,000, 12,000, I'm under the gun, still six handed with King Queen offsuit. Make it 27,000. Barry Schulman's in middle position. And he shoves all in for 141,000. Action folds back to us. King Queen, not my favorite hand, but sometimes in life you gotta gamble. Does fairly well against his reshoving range. We put in the call and he has ace 10. Let's hit. Ace on the river. Love it. <laughs> With lines at 10,000, 20,000, we're five handed, 10 players remain. 
out of the gun opens to 40,000. I'm on the button with pocket sevens and 220,000. Sometimes you just gotta stick it in the middle, hope for a fold or hope to be a flipping. I shove all in, action folds back to him and he quickly calls. He's got a jack nine of spades. Let's hold. Our tournament life is on the line. Ten players remain, two tables of five. Action folds to the small blind who limps in. I'm in the big blind with East King offsuit. What a great spot. He has 335,000. I have about 400,000. Could jam, or we could raise to possibly induce a limp jam from uh, you know, a lot of worse aces. Maybe even some King Queen, King Jack type hands that were trapping. Stack sizes are pretty decent for it. So after I make it 70,000, he goes deep into the tank and he eventually settles on a shove. We snap call, and we're up against queen six offsuit. Let's hold. just happened. We have reached the final table with the shortest stack. Nine players remain. We have 75,000 chips going to 15,000, 25,000, 25,000. That's right, three blinds. It's time to run hot. Let's get it done. A few doubles and we're right back in it. Congratulations on making the money and now the final table. As you can see by the board from here on out, every place comes with its own pay jump. The only thing that really means is if you lose two of you on the same hand, of those two, the higher stack that starts the hand gets the higher place. It is midnight and we're at the final table. Second hand off the deck. 25K big blind. We got 75K. We look down in middle position with ace queen of clubs. Oh baby. We shove it in. The cutoff shoves in for just over 200,000. The button's all in for 200,000. And the small blind has him covered and is all in. A four way all in at the final table. Our clubs are live, let's hit. I'm up against pocket fours, ace queen and ace jack. What the hell? All right, let's turn them up guys. We'll deal with side butts if we have to. Boom. Hey, four, four. Clubs. Ace, queen, clubs. Small cards. Clubs. Ace, give me an ace. Okay, bomb that way. Did you win? Jesus Christ. And I am out of the win. $400 Winter Classic. $400 in, $17.50 back. 12 hours of poker action. 5% going to the boxers and 5% also going to the random retweeter.